What's up guys? I got another video for you. It's a 1-3 game at Bally's. Played super deep. It was a lot of fun um, and I hope you guys enjoy the video. So as you enjoy some of these beautiful Colorado mountains on my way to Blackhawk, I gotta say this was a fantastic table. There were some pretty interesting people. They were splashing around. There was some drama. There were some laughs. We pretty much had it all. There was a $6 to $15 straddle on pretty much every hand and it was playing absolutely gigantic for a 1-3 game. It was at Bally's, and at Bally's, it's a match the stack game, so there were, everybody was hundreds of big blinds deep. Awesome way to play. I love this kind of poker. And to make matters even better, my friend Sarah is the dealer. I used to play with her a lot down in Denver. There's like a bar poker tournament that I would play a couple times a week back in the day, and she's a really good person, and trust me, she does not disappoint. She deals some heat. So jumping into the first hand, the first literal two cards that come my way are pocket deuces, and since this was my first hand, I had nothing set up. I didn't even have my camera out, so I did not film any of it, and you'll just have to trust me and believe what I tell you. So I peel back the pocket deuces, and I am in the under-the-gun position, and I loosely raise it up to $18 over a $6 button straddle. To my surprise, I get five callers. Yes, it is that kind of table. So we are going six ways to a flop with already $108 in the pot. And the flop comes two, five, seven, all diamonds. I flop a set, so I'm feeling pretty good, but it's a very scary, connected, and monotone board. On these types of boards, regardless of what I'm holding, I'm c-betting frequently, but I'm also gonna be sizing very small. So I lead out from UTG for $20, and I think this is a little too small. I would like something like one third pot, maybe 30 or 35 more, but it is what it is. It's not that big of a difference. But when the middle position player calls, that entices the other four players to stick around as well. So we are going to a river six handed, and the pot is now $228, and the turn is the king of clubs, which is amazing because it's not another diamond. I'm feeling pretty good still at this point, and I decide to slow down and check it. I'm not really trying to trap here. I just have no idea what these other five people could have. You know, I, I, I could be ahead. I could be behind. I'm not sure where I am. I'm confused. I check. Checks around to the button who makes it 55. This is still a pretty small bet compared to the size of the pot. Um, so I just call and only one other player calls. So now we're going three ways, thankfully. Pot is now 394 and the river is a relatively, relatively clean one. It's the three of clubs. I check it once again, planning on calling pretty much any bet but it doesn't come to that as it checks through and I show and I'm good. I scoop a very large one here right off the bat and the button player shows ace king. So I'm not sure why he didn't three bet me, but it is what it is. And uh, yeah, we, we scoop in a fat one. Bought in for 300, so now I'm sitting around 600. Double up right off the bat, always feels very nice. So, like I said, Sarah did not disappoint, but I think it will get even better because soon after the deuce's hand, I look down at the beautiful ace five of hearts, a very pretty hand. The low jack decides to open things up and make it $15. I'm in the hijack right next to the guy, and sometimes I'll three bet this, but in position of the razor, I decide on just a call. I instantly regret this when I remember the table is insane and the cut off the button and the big blind also make the call. We're going five ways to a flop with $75 in the middle, and we see a board of the two of hearts, the four of hearts, and the king of clubs. An absolutely fantastic board for me as I have a straight flush draw, and even better when the big blind donks out for $50. The initial raiser and I both make the call, the rest fold. Pot is now 225 and the turn is a brick six of clubs. Couldn't have made it easy for me, let me bink it right away, but hey, that's poker. Hopefully the river's a little better than that, but the big blind decides to lead out for 125. It's a pretty nice bet from this guy, and in the moment I treated it as a one half pot size bet, even though it is a little more than that. When I'm playing live, I, I pretty much just round to the nearest easy percentage. So I need about 25% equity to continue. My outs are nine different hearts, three more threes, and I'm assuming an ace is good, so I have three aces as well. So I'm sitting here with about 15 outs, giving me 32% equity. Plus this guy was splashing around, so there's a good chance he could have air, meaning it's a slam dunk call to me. And the uh, player behind me folds. Pot is now 475 and the river is a bink three of clubs. Hell yeah, I hit my gutter and this guy, even better, jams into me. He has me covered with about $300 left in my stack. I make the snap call. The guy shows three, four offsuit for a river two pair and I scoop this massive $1,075 pot. And I'll let you guys watch this play out. And by the way, the table gave me consent. Four, one yeah, take a picture of it. And when you lose, you better take a picture of that too, though. I do. Don't worry. 
Go like this. Do you want to be in the video? Yeah. What are you going to do with the save? Be fair. All right. Uh, I will. No, I don't want to. I don't want to. 85. It's supposed to be like this. No, you have to take a picture. After all of you. 294. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 I'll, I'll take a picture for you. No, I, I'll, I'll post my losers too. Don't worry. So yeah, obviously I was getting a little bit clown there for recording, but it was all friendly banter and the guy I beat was actually a really nice guy. We had a couple conversations throughout the session. Um, the whole table was nice. We were going back and forth making jokes. So overall, great vibe. I liked it a lot. Um, so for this next one, I peel back queen 10 of spades and I'm actually on the button here. But since there was a straddle from the cutoff position, I actually have to act first preflop. And because of that, I decided to just limp in for six and just see what happens next. Everybody limps to the middle position player who raises it up to $40 because of all the dead money in the middle. I decide on a call, the cutoff, and the button also call. Going four ways to a flop with $172 in the middle, the board is the eight of spades, the seven of diamonds, and the ace of spades. Pretty solid flop for me as I have a spade draw, but that's pretty much it. And so it unexpectedly checks around to me. Um, I could bet here, but multi-way, wanting to realize my equity, I just decide on a check. We go to a turn card of the 10 of diamonds. So now I have a pair and I gain some more showdown value and also a couple extra outs to go along with my flush draw. So this is a pretty good card, all things considered. Big blind then leads for $3, which is a very small bet compared to the pot. And it folds around to the cutoff who makes the call. I decide to then raise it up to $90 from the small blind. I actually really hate this sizing. I wish I made it bigger, like 150 to incentivize more folds and build a pot if they decide to call. And if I end up binking the river, both the big blind and the cutoff call. The pot is now $442 and the river is a magical two of spades. So I make my flush and it checks to me. I bet out here for $150 praying for a call, but unfortunately they both think the better of it and they both fold. Even though we didn't get paid here on the river, uh, I still scoop a pretty big one. All right, so moving along, jump into this next one. I look down at the beautiful big slick of diamonds and the UTG player decides to make it $12. And believe it or not, there are five callers. And when it comes to me, I'm in the small blind and with about $60 of dead money in the pot, I decide to raise it up big. I make it 65 bones, folds around to the button who makes the call. The pot is $178 and we see the cards 8, 9, 10 rainbow. Absolutely terrible flop for me, but I decide to see bet anyways for a very small sizing of $30. Button decides to make the call and I'm very relieved he didn't raise me because I would have had to insta muck there. The turn is a six and I am ready to shut down here. Um, so when I check, the button bets 125 into about 238 and sadly, I just make the fold. I move on. I live to see another day. I decide that there's a better, better spots out there I can pick. Ace King High probably isn't cutting it here. This board smashes his range. So I fold. So for this next hand, I look down at the ace 10 of spades, a hand that I very much enjoy playing. And the action starts off with a crazy man in the under the gun position and making it 15. It folds to me. So I decide to three bet it up here to 45. Probably could have gone bigger, but there was no limps or dead money. So I landed on the three X sizing. Only the under the gun player makes the call. And we're going to a flop with the 10 of diamonds, the jack of diamonds, and the eight of spades. With $94 in the pot, it checks to me. So I C bet here for $35 and the UTG player makes the call. Pot is now $164 and the turn is a very, very scary seven of diamonds. Checks to me once again. This is a very scary card because it brings in the flush, some straights. And if I were to bet here and I get check raised, it would have been a very uncomfortable position for me. So in order to avoid that, I decide to check it back. The river is a brick, two of clubs. Um, and the crazy guy decides to check to me again. I really want to bet here for value, but at the same time, what worse hands would be calling me? And again, if I get check raised, I would likely have to let it go. So again, for similar reasons on the turn, I check back and he shows king queen offsuit for a missed straight draw. So it's one of the few hands that I could have gotten value from on the turn, but overall I like my checks here. I'm trying to avoid uncomfortable positions. So I scoop this pot. The last hand of the night, I look down at another nice looking suited ace, the ace deuce of hearts, and I'm on the button. There's a cutoff straddle. So again, I'm first to act pre-flop. And because of this, I just opt on a limp waiting to see what kind of action will occur. The small blind who is next to act makes it 26 and it folds to the cutoff who calls. I also make the call. We're going three ways to a flop with $78 in the middle and the flop comes seven, eight, ace, two clubs. This is an okay flop as I have top pair, but I can be easily outkicked in this situation. So I have to tread carefully. The initial razor makes it 30, the cutoff and I both call without any hesitation. The turn is a nine of diamonds, which brings in a lot of straights and it makes two flush draws out there. So when the initial razor makes it 50, the cutoff and I both call again. In hindsight, I really hate this because I definitely would be folding to a large river bet. So I could have just saved myself $50 if I was expecting that. River is the 10 of hearts, meaning both the flushes bricked out, but any six or jack makes a straight. 
So the initial raise are now jams for 160-ish and the cutoff calls. What am I beating here against two opponents? There are tons of two pairs, straights, a lot beats me. So I lay it down. The cutoff surprisingly shows ace four of clubs and the initial raiser shows ace five offsuit. So they end up chopping this pot. And unfortunately, if I had called, I would have chopped this one with them. What's up guys? I hope you enjoyed that video. Um, I ran super hot for that first hour. It was pretty insane. I was up well over a thousand dollars. Um, and then over the next three hours, I kind of just chipped down. I lost some small pots. Um, nothing crazy happened. So I was in the game for $300 and out for $1,185 for a profit of $885. A great day at 1-3, a great day at Bally's. Um, everybody was super nice. The table was cool. The, the staff was really cool about me filming this time. They kind of knew what was going on, which was awesome. Um, really appreciative to them. Great people. Um, but yeah, uh, I hope you liked it. Like, comment, subscribe. Let me know what you think. Tell me if I played bad, if I played good, if I didn't do anything right. Let me know. Um, always open to hear. I like your guys' comments. I reply to everyone. So yeah, hopefully I got another video coming for you in the next week or two. So hope you guys enjoy.